Gliding in the air is a Kalugo, a small mammal that is still existing today. It's not really a flying squirrel, even though it looks like one. God designed webbed hands and feet and made its skin connect from the neck to the tail. It allows the Kalugo to glide. They can glide to almost 137 meters. That's even farther than a football field. He makes another happy landing. But this isn't a rock. It's a large sauropod dinosaur called Spinophorosaurus. The first two and nearly complete skeletons of this species were found and studied between 2007 to 2009. But the most amazing thing about Spinophorosaurus was the belief that it had a spiked tailed club, almost like a Stegosaurus's tail spikes. But in 2013, two paleontologists studied more on the tail and found that it didn't have any kind of armor plating that is seen on the fossils of other armored dinosaurs. And so the bones that were thought to be from a tail spiked club might actually be clavicles or the collarbone. It's the bone that touches from the neck bone to the shoulder bone. Maybe Spinophorosaurus had only spikes on its tail, but had no club. But the thing is, we may never know the full answer to this. We only have clues. One of these clues is from Bishop Bells' tomb. It shows a picture of two animals with both long necks and tails fighting. One animal has a spiked tail, while the other one doesn't. These animals could have been sauropods thriving in the late 1400s. God created many amazing sauropods. For example, Isosaurus was designed with a fat vertical neck. Discovered in India, its fossils were well preserved, but the skull, back legs, tail, and foot bones are missing. And so we don't know what its exact total length is. The first letters in the Isosaurus's name are initialed for the Indian Statistical Institute. The Isosaurus was named after this research institute in India. Long necks is one of the most distinguishing features of the sauropods. But what if you were to know that God might have created a sauropod with a neck that was no longer than the length of its own back leg? Brachy Trachylopan. He's a member of the short-necked sauropod kind similar to the Dicreosaurus and the Amargosaurus. It's believed that he would eat small to medium-tall plants. But the problem is that the specimen has lost less than 50% of its bones, including the skull. Without a complete skeleton, we can't be certain if Brachytrechalopan was really designed with the shortest neck of all the sauropods. It's believed that before its discovery, parts of the fossil were exposed and then lost to erosion. What was left of the fossil were found by a shepherd named Daniel Mesa. He found the fossils while searching for his lost sheep. God sure has amazing ways to help his precious children find amazing things. It's like his giving a present to you. The Brachytrachylopan was named in honor of Daniel Mesa's discovery of it. Since he was a shepherd, they named the dinosaur with the meaning short-necked Pan. Pan is the name of a false god of the shepherds. There is only one true holy shepherd, and he is the one who laid down his life for all his sheep, who we are. <coughs> Titanosaurs, which are the really big sauropods, are known from very few and incomplete fossil remains, because their bodies are too big to be quickly preserved before scavengers and environmental effects would scatter the bones. Even the great Argentinosaurus was only known from a few bones. That is, until in 2005, a better and almost complete titanosaur was discovered. The paleontologists had spent four summers digging it out, and they have found 70% of it, and suggested that it weighed more than the weight of 70 rexes and might have been longer than two school buses. In 2014, the fossil was named after the indestructible battleships from World War I, Dreadnoughtus. This young male isn't fully grown yet, but he's still heavy enough to not be carried away by the river rapids and would give him protection from some predators. The single example of a specimen, or holotype, was actually not a full-grown adult. And so paleontologists think that adult Dreadnoughtus would grow bigger than this holotype. Though they might not have grown bigger than the Argentinosaurus. But alas, without more fossils to complete the Argentinosaurus skeleton, 
We can't be 100% sure of this. Why was this dinosaur so well preserved? It might have been because it was killed during the Great Flood and was being well preserved in the process. And so the Dreadnoughtus died before it reached adulthood. Fortunately, this young male might make it to a good lifelong age. In New Mexico in 1922, paleontologists found fossils of titanosaurs and named it after the Ojo Alamo formation, the Alamosaurus. God designed their long necks and teeth to help them reach and eat the top of trees. Their large size and whip-like tails can be used to defend themselves against predators like T-Rex and rival Alamosaurs. But an adult T-Rex couldn't kill an adult Alamosaurus, but their young are more vulnerable to be hunted by the predators. God designed most of the long-necked dinosaur kinds to live in herds for finding food and later for protection. Another neat thing about Alamosaurs is that thousands of their bones were found in the U.S. state of Texas. Paleontologists think that there might have been between 200,000 to 300,000 Alamosaurs altogether. This vast herd must have been killed during the Great Flood, the only possible reason how such a cataclysm could kill such a vast herd. Less bones of the adults have been found because their huge size takes a while to be preserved, but are quick to vanish because of scavenging and environmental effects. But more complete fossils of young juveniles have been found because their small size makes it easier for them to be preserved. With that, paleontologists study their bones to decide exactly how large the adults were. Patagosaurus were named because 12 fossil specimens were found in the Argentinian region of Patagonia. Though not as big as the well-known sauropods like the Brachiosaurus or the Apatosaurus, God designed an average adult to grow as large as a bull African elephant. If you are wondering what the movement of a large dinosaur would look like, watch the elephants at your zoos. Of course, elephants aren't dinosaurs, but they are big. And as you're watching them move, you'd get an idea on how a four-legged dinosaur would move. The Patagosaurus herd have been traveling a lot to find more food. They've been to this part of the land before. While they were gone, the trees and plants have been able to regrow their greenery. We don't know how vast the plants and animals were during the pre-flood era, but maybe it was as exotic or even more exotic than the African wildlife of today, where the land was filled with more kinds of plants and animals since the creation week. The famous Brontosaurus is back. But how can that be? In 2015, after concluding that Brontosaurus was actually an Apatosaurus, Emmanuel Schopp and some scientists did new research and said that the Brontosaurus was its own species. They scanned and studied every bone of the sauropod kind that the Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, and the Brontosaurus are in, and found that each bone are slightly different from each other. From a creationist perspective, the difference between these animals doesn't really matter too much. For creationist Dr. Timothy Clary had said that the Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus are an example of God designing the diversity of their kind. Just like how God made the cat kind diversify, and today there are lions, tigers, cheetahs, and over hundreds of house cat breeds. All of them were descended from the two cats that left Noah's Ark, and before that, they were descended from the cats that God made during the creation week. As it goes for the Brontosaurus, Apatosaurus, and the Diplodocus, all are in the same biblical dinosaur kind. Near a large freshwater lake, 12 juvenile Brontosaurs feed on yummy ferns. They are all that's left from a large clutch of eggs that were laid two and a half years ago. They've been living in the forest ever since they've hatched, where the foliage would help them hide from predators. Safety in numbers is another protective strategy, but many of their siblings have been killed by predators. Now they are almost 7 meters long. They're safe from many small predators. 
but now they have become vulnerable to larger predators. The group detects danger and flees. Alioramus, a small member of the Tyrannosaurid kind. And he might have grown as big as a draft Percheron horse, or maybe even bigger. He's distinguished by having five ridges on his long snout. Each ridge is one centimeter tall. He could probably hunt down prey that are fast and defenseless like this monitor lizard. And now his recent snack should give the Alioramus enough energy to hunt down his next victim, a young Brontosaurus. And the benefit of hunting down slow prey is that he won't have to run fast to catch up to them. The juvenile brontosaurus will now need the protection from an adult herd. Not too far away, the adult brontosaurus herd hears the cry from the juveniles. The Alioramus has a weak bite force, and his teeth were more useful for catching prey. But if he keeps on biting at the neck, he might win over the juvenile. An adult female comes to the rescue. If her size isn't scary enough for the Alioramus, she'll use a deadlier weapon. Her tail. Scientists believe that her tail could make a cracking sound like a bullwhip, but the sound would have been louder. The whip from that tail could badly injure a T-Rex, but if the Alioramus gets hit by that tail, it could kill him. And so the Alioramus flees. This adult female may not be their biological mother, but she welcomes them to the adult herd where they will have more protection. As for the injured one, her wounds aren't as serious as they seem, and so she will heal eventually. At the other end of the bay are a small herd of super long-necked sauropods called Olmeisaurus. They are named after Mount Olme, which is a mountain in China. For 82 years, paleontologists claim to have found several species of Omisaurus fossils ranging from 10 to 20 meters long. Maybe all these species are from the same single species of Omisaurus. Or maybe these are subspecies, kind of like how today there are six subspecies of tigers, yet all of them are from the cat kind. So what kind of sauropod is the Omisaurus? Some people think it belongs to the sauropod kind which the Mementisaurus is also part of which is another super long-necked sauropod. However, the Mementisaurus might belong to the same sauropod kind that the Diplodocus is a member of, and maybe that includes the Omesaurus as well.